This is Valley News Live at noon. And so it begins today and tomorrow are first alert weather days because of the widespread rain we're expecting as we head into the weekend. Let's go right away to meteorologist Lisa Green, who's tracking the rain and the possibility of some thunderstorms. Lisa. Well, good afternoon. Yes, we've been tracking rain all morning long, and now we are starting to get some rainfall reports in, and it's not a good picture here from some of our locations in southeastern North Dakota. Oaks, Verona, Ellendale, at least an inch of rain has already fallen with this system. The good thing about these locations is they drain more into the James River Valley uh, air basin area, so it's not necessarily going into places like the Cheyenne or some of the tributaries of the Red. Uh, the James River Valley has not been as bad, but Fingal into southern parts of uh, Barnes County and back into Leonard. We've had rainfall reports of close to, well, a little over three quarters of an inch and getting close to there in the Leonard area. So those are some higher amounts. Those are falling or uh, uh, draining into the Cheyenne Basin and eventually into the Red River. So seeing some of those uh, likely forecasts of that one inch plus actually coming to reality now in those areas so far. The rain continues to push northward. We're looking at rain now in Grand Forks. You can see the drops on the camera and that continues to come down. Taking a look at the Southern Valley. This has been the area of focus so far and we're still seeing rain in some of these sites that I've already reported to you and that still comes down in some areas on a heavier uh, note over by the Fingal area. You can see some orange and red uh, falling in that southern part of Barnes County. And moving a little farther north, you can see the rain has now made its way to Highway 2 and crossing over with Grand Forks, of course, seeing that rain now, as we just mentioned. Fargo, kind of on the edge of the heavier rain at this point in time, though still seeing some areas of raindrops. And this is all part of this first surge of rainfall. This line extends down to the south, and overall, this is just kind of moving northward, perhaps a slight movement to the east. But overall, our focus today is more in eastern North Dakota for this first round. Minnesota seeing some rain too, but it's not as heavy, at least at this point in time. In the darker green, we've got a flood watch in effect until Sunday morning. Significant overland flooding is likely in some of the same areas that saw it with that first round last week. And then, of course, in the brighter green areas, we have our river flood warnings and overland flood warnings that are already in effect. So there is a lot to talk about. We'll take a look at some river levels, and we're now factoring in some of this moisture into your river forecast. So I'll show you some of those, and we'll talk about what to expect through the weekend coming up in just a couple of minutes. Thank you. With all that in mind, it's a good idea to keep that VNL weather app handy for forecasts right at your fingertips. You can download and use it for free. Just search VNL weather in the App Store today. New for you at noon, a young man is facing charges and two other suspects are on the run after a car crashed in South Fargo. It happened around 930 last night in the 1100 block of 4th Avenue South. When officers arrived on scene, three people were seen leaving the area. Police identified the crash car as stolen from a report taken earlier in the day. Fargo police arrested one juvenile male who is being charged with refusal to halt. Officials say he has been uncooperative in identifying the other individuals involved. Police are still searching for the other two suspects. The Minnesota Bureau of Criminal Apprehension is investigating an officer involved shooting involving an Ottertail County deputy and a Minnesota State Patrol trooper last night near Bolus and Morrison County. Officials say a drug task force unit attempted to pull over a vehicle during a traffic stop. That's when the trooper and deputy ended up firing their weapons into a car that ended up killing one man. The deputy who was who responded is said to be OK. A Minnesota man who was reportedly stabbed by his son has died. 59 year old Stephen Lynn Earl died Wednesday night during surgery. Deputies responded to a domestic disturbance in South Bend Township. Earl told authorities his son had assaulted him in the past and now he had a knife. An apparent struggle was heard on the open 911 line while deputies were responding. Authorities say 24 year old Travis Earl acknowledged stabbing his father. He remains in the Blue Earth County Jail. We have new information. The woman accused of starting a major fire at a Dilworth apartment complex is out on bail. Court documents say 32 year old Brianna Page was arrested Wednesday for felony arson charges. She was bailed out the same day after a judge set her bail at zero dollars with several conditions. Page is accused of setting a set of garages at a Dilworth apartment complex on fire back in November causing $85,000 in damages. She's charged with both second and third degree arson. 
as well as felony count of negligent fires. Page, Page's next hearing is scheduled for June 30th. If convicted, she could spend up to 10 years in prison. Meanwhile, a hotel room at the Motel 6 on 36th Street South has major damage after a fire ignited in a room just before 10 last night. Fargo fire crews were met with heavy black smoke as they opened the door. They discovered that the mattress and bedding were on fire. Firefighters were able to put out the flames within 10 minutes. No injuries have been recorded, reported. The cause of the fire is under investigation and no word yet on estimated damages. The avian flu that has killed hundreds of birds and spread across more than two dozen states has now been detected in a human for the first time in the U.S. Health officials say a man was working on a commercial farm in Colorado. He reported only one symptom so far, which has been fatigue. The affected flock the man was working with has been euthanized. For the first time in more than two years, a group of vets from the Red River Valley will be heading to Washington, D.C. tomorrow as a part of the honor flight. More than 80 vets from North Dakota and Minnesota are making the trip. It's a way to say thanks for their service to the country. While in Washington, they will visit several memorial memorials. Our very own Mike Morgan is going along for the trip. Look out for new stories each evening newscast. Coming up at noon, how sneaker collectors can do some soul searching at a new museum. But next, meteorologist Lisa Green is tracking a storm that will bring major rain to the area.